Good afternoon. It is Monday, August 24th, 2020, and welcome to Economic Observations. We are going to talk about possible double dip recession. We're going to talk about stimulus and the lack thereof. Um, we're going to talk about debt, eviction, and hunger hitting people all across the country, and uh, that economists say that this is a double dip. There's no V-shaped recovery. Dr. Doom says it's not coming. And we're also going to talk about GDP will not recover until 2022. So hold on tight, folks. we got a lot to talk about. First one is, sorry, America, but there is no second stimulus check coming. Congress can't come to a resolution. There's a skinny bill that the GOP put together that doesn't have funding for a lot of things. It does include funding for the post office and it does have a little boost to unemployment, but it doesn't include another stimulus check for all Americans and it doesn't have any fundings for the state. Unlikely that Congress will pass a bill like that. I know the states are really hurting and if Congress doesn't do anything, those states, all states are in for a real economic adjustment, um, teachers, the firemen, the policemen, administrative, librarians, you name it. State officials across the board will be cut. New hires will never come. Service on roads will be halted and it will become a nightmare. So I know that a lot of states on the East Coast, especially in that Northeast region, um, they need help and they need a lot of it. And I guess if they had the luxury of not being first to get the virus, they could have done things differently. But we had very limited information, and unfortunately, things shut down and our economy went to shit. Debt, eviction, and hunger, it says on the Washington Post. Millions fall back into crisis as stimulus and safety nets vanish. Yes, that's right. They vanished. Thousands upon thousands of people are being evicted from their homes. Still, evicted from their homes. They will not have a roof over their head. I mean, everyone's supposed to be washing their hands all the time and masking up. If you don't have the luxury of having some place to lay your head at night, you don't have a sink. Anyway, people are getting evicted and nobody seems to care in Congress. It's just they're on vacation and many people's lives are in turmoil. But 17 million people would have dropped below the poverty line without the $500 billion in direct intervention to American families. Congress can keep pouring money into the airlines, into big businesses, and all those companies, those zombie companies that won't even survive this, but Congress can't help the American people with a roof over their head and food to feed. I mean, these people are scared. What are you going to do? I mean, imagine you facing that. Imagine it's you. This is America. I have a school in Tanzania. You know, prior to this pandemic, I'd be in Tanzania six months a year working on the ground. People in Tanzania think America is the land of opportunity. They all like would love to come here. They envy me. They think I'm rich. They think that I come from this country where opportunity abounds. I try to tell them that America is not the America it was. And they, it's like they don't believe me almost. Is there opportunity? Uh, the poverty threshold for a family of four is $26,200. If you earn less than that, you're considered poor or you're considered poverty. And we all hear people talking about the V-shaped recovery. Oh, you know that V? Well, Dr. Doom says there isn't going to be a V-shaped recover. He warns that the battered U.S. economy will have a particularly tough time delivering a swift rebound. The V-shaped bounce is more like a U, he says. Another article says, economists see a chance of double dip recession. Here we go. Same story, different authors. 80% of economists believe that we have a one in four chance of a double dip recession. Economists are concerned about the increased amount of U.S. debt. Another article on Forbes. Forbes warns the U.S. GDP won't recover to pre-pandemic levels until 2022. The United States remains stuck in a recession that will take years 
for economic growth to return. If you ask those people on Main Street, you ask the growing homeless population in every city and town across America if they thought it was inadequate. I mean, I was reading articles of this woman making $96,000 a year in Florida, PhD. She has a PhD, she can't find a job. She lost her job in March. One of them, she can't pay the rent. She's gonna lose her housing. She has nowhere to go besides her student loans and the cost of caring for her special needs child. She has very little savings. She has no resources left. Her bank account is, you know, near zero. These are not people who wanna stay home. These are people who wanna work. Where is the stimulus for those people? Where is the stimulus or money or help or however you want to call it for the people who need it? Uh, there's a growing need. There are millions of people around the country that need help. And if Congress doesn't act soon, it's going to get worse because it's going to be even harder for these people to find a job without a home. And then what, they go on the Social Security and the dole and the handouts for the poor? I mean, is that what we really want in society? Or do we want to bring this back? Yes, I am so concerned about that debt. But there is a trickle-down effect. I was in Quincy, Massachusetts today. It's a, it's a city about, about 10 miles south of Boston. I was talking to a guy who owned a bridal gown and evening wear shop. He told me he had 40 employees at one time. 40. He said he was waiting and hoping for the best prom season ever. It was going to be the best. He had orders. He had tailors. He had seamstresses. He had loads of people working for him. It was in a great, it's in a great location on a corner. He told me none of these businesses on this whole street will survive this. After everything shut down, he called all the high school kids and said, come pick up your prom dresses. You know, you paid for half of them. He says he didn't ask for the balance. Just come pick them up, take them. Nothing he can do about it. But it's the trickle-down effect. People aren't buying wedding dresses or evening gowns or black tie gowns or dresses or party wear. So his business is, you know, a side effect of the closures of all those other that business hospitality we know is devastated. But now we're looking trickle-down, right? So... All these people, tailors, seamstresses, shop owners, fabric, you know, sequins, I mean, silk. I mean, all those industries are trickled down from the closure of the restaurants, the events. Such a downward spiral, and it affects so many people all along the way. I mean, we don't know where this is going. We do know that it, another article I read said if people wear masks, if every person wore a mask, we can get this. We can become normal again. If everyone wore a mask, we can, we can get rid of this thing. We can function without shutting down again. You know, maybe bars won't open for a while or restaurants won't be at full capacity. Maybe gyms won't open or movie theaters or sports events, but, but the rest of society can be open if we all wore a mask. I mean, just think about it. Just wear the damn mask. Get the numbers low enough. And, and yeah, we're doing a good job. Numbers have come down. But there are still people not wearing that damn mask that are causing trouble for the rest of the country or for the rest of the world. Wear the mask. Let's beat this. If we don't have this under control, the economy is never going to recover. And we need to recover. We need to recover for those 20 million people who don't have a job. We need to recover for those 20 million people who are not going to have a home soon. We need to recover because those 40 million people you know, need to be fed. Because it's the 20 million people out of work, but then it's all the children and all their, or all their dependents. Just wear the damn mask. Let's get our economy up and going. Sign the stimulus package one last time. Let's give this a go. Let's be unified as a country. We need a unified approach. There's no one who wants to see things open up again more than me. I don't know when I'm going back to Tanzania. I'd love to go back to Tanzania. I don't want to get on an airplane right now. But they're going to get another $25 billion in bailouts when the American people 
don't even have a spoonful of food. Nice talking to you today. Please subscribe if you haven't, and we'll talk again soon. Have a nice day.